Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this Conbi 2 Zigbee USB stick. In a previous episode, we looked at the Nortec Huzz BZB1 USB stick and pairing devices using the ZHA integration. So we'll have a bit of an opportunity with this one to see if there's any real discernible differences. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's affiliate links in the video description to a bunch of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past, including this Conbi 2 Zigbee USB stick. And there's other ways to support the channel as well, such as signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link or supporting the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So in preparation for the upcoming train and hobby show, more on that later, I decided I needed to get hold of another Zigbee USB stick so that I can control my Zigbee accessories without needing to have a bunch of different proprietary hubs. And I figured also using a Zigbee USB stick and Home Assistant will simplify the setup for the train and hobby show a fair bit. Now it's been suggested to me before that I check out the Conbi USB stick. So I picked up this Conbi 2 for $59 from Amazon and I'll put an affiliate link in the video description below. As always, we'll take a quick look around the outside of the box and there's not a whole lot to really see here. Uh, we've got Conbi 2 Zigbee USB gateway uh, and a picture of the unit there. Uh, Foscon and uh, the web address there. Uh, we've also got Dresden Electronic on this side and a barcode. And then on the bottom, we've got the MAC address and an install code and a couple of QR codes there as well. And some compliance details like the FCC ID and it is IP20 rated uh, and don't throw it in the bin, etc. Uh, being that there's not much else on the outside of the box, let's uh, get into the box and see what's inside. So I will uh, just open that end up there and we'll sh give it a shake. Uh, and we've got the USB stick itself and uh, we've got a little guide here. And uh, it says home automation gateway, generic USB gateway with power amplifier for range of two to three rooms or 200 meters in free line of sight. Uh, and uh, there's some info here to visit the website. Uh, and it also says uh, for best radio performance uh, to ensure a strong radio signal, the use of a USB extension cable is recommended. I have read that USB three ports especially uh, can cause interference on 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, it says a wide range of supported devices and there's a link to the website there uh, and supported platforms, Windows, Ubuntu, Raspbian and Docker. Uh, and there's some um, more compliance information on the back there. Uh, looking at the unit itself, it's fairly nondescript. It has a, a rubberized black coating. It's quite sleek and nice. Uh, and you can pull the cap off and it's just a USB stick. You would be forgiven for mistaking this for a regular USB drive. Uh, so being that there's not really a whole lot else to mention about uh, this let's get it set up now for the purposes of testing and also for the train and hobby show I've got this separate Raspberry Pi 3 to be a home assistant server speaking of the train and hobby show from the 11th to the 13th of March 2023 I'll be at the train and hobby show at Sandown Racecourse and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne's southeast the Train and Hobby Show showcases the best hobbies in Australia from model railways, ham radio and electronics, radio controlled models, 
makers and arts and crafts. And this year for the very first time, the Train and Hobby Show is adding computing and home automation into the mix. I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show for all three days and I'll have demos of gadgets like light bulbs, smart switches, and a Combi Zigbee USB stick. And more. We'll have some basic automation set up to showcase some simple automations you can do in the comfort of your own home. And I'll have some Raspberry Pis set up with Home Assistant and I'll also be showing off my Grafana dashboard for energy and environmental monitoring that I already have in place here at home. So if you're in Melbourne from the 11th to the 13th of March 2023, come on down to Sandown Racecourse and say hello. Get your tickets today at trainandhobbyshow.com.au. That's T-R-A-I-N-A-N-D-H-O-B-B-Y-S-H-O-W.com.au. Now back to the combi stick. Okay, so as I mentioned, I have uh, this Raspberry Pi 3 to use for the Train and Hobby Show as my Home Assistant server for the three days that I'll be there. And I'm going to add the Combi Stick to it. So obviously, I just need to plug the Combi Stick into an available USB port. Now, with that done, I'll head over to my Home Assistant instance that I have here for my hobby show instance of Home Assistant. Now there's two ways that we can do this. We can set it up using decons or we can just set it up using uh, ZHA. Uh, I'll show you how to install decons, but we won't go too in depth with it. So uh, we'll go into settings and then add-ons. Uh, and uh, it says we don't have any add-ons installed yet. So I'll head to the add-on store and I'll click on decons and I want to install decons. This is going to take a few minutes to install uh, and then uh, we'll be able to take a look at the web interface for decons. Okay, great. So uh, that took probably a good two or three minutes to install. Uh, what we'll do is I will turn on a watchdog and I'll turn on a show in sidebar there. Uh, and then in configuration, I want to select the device, which is this USB Dresden Electronic Combi 2, and I'll save that change. We'll head back to info there, and I'll click on start. So that's going to start up the decons container. Uh, and once that's started up, we'll need to give it a couple of minutes uh, before we can launch the web interface for decons. So once uh, the container is up and running, we can head over to Decons and there's two different web apps. Uh, there's Foscon and Foscon is fairly basic. We've got this Foscon GW Home Assistant .local, uh, and we can give it a gateway name and give it a password. I'm going to just give it the same password as my login. Uh, and now it says connect lights so we can uh, plug in a Zigbee light, search for them, and then and, uh, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to skip that and then uh, close that. Uh, and if we see here, we've got some groups, uh, lights, scenes, and edit. And in the hamburger stack in the top left corner, uh, we've got view, uh, and we've got gateway. And we can see details of the gateway, and we can back up the gateway. Uh, we've got... Uh, change the login password. We've got some advanced settings like changing the time zone at the moment. The time zone is uh, ETC uh, and we can connect third party apps like uh, Amazon, Hue Essentials, etc. Uh, and we can do some power stuff or reset the gateway. Uh, if we go to Wi Fi, uh, the access point was not configured by the Foscon app. I think that that requires an actual Foscon access point, not. The USB stick so that's not really going to work for us. Uh, we've also got lights uh, here, switches, we can add switches. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to use a different method to add some Zigbee switches to the Home Assistant instance here. And we've also got some sensors and we can create a virtual sensor to see whether or not it's daylight uh, or we can uh, add other sensors. Uh, so I'm not going to get too hung up in decons. Uh, if you want me to do a deeper dive on decons, 
let me know in the comments below and I'll look at doing another video about that. There's also this uh, decons here, which it opens up a VNC session to a, a Linux session here. Uh, and we can see, we can click on that unit and we can see some statistics of the gateway, things like um, the maximum buffer size and the manufacturer code and uh, some additional details in there. Uh, and that's just for the node. We can see some cluster info. Now, as we add more devices to the Zigbee network, we can actually view uh, the node tree as it grows here. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do, instead of using any of this to pair any buttons or anything, I'm going to go to settings in Home Assistant and then devices and services. Uh, and we're going to scroll through here and we see we've got a Combi2 Zigbee Home Automation uh, discovered here and I'm going to click on configure uh, and it's going to ask me do you want to set up combi2 I'm going to hit submit and uh, it's asking me to choose the network settings I'm just going to click on keep radio network settings you can upload a manual backup or erase the network settings and create a new network I'm just going to hit keep uh, and it's now loading the next step for Zigbee home automation Zigbee Home Automation, we've used that before with the Nortec stick, so we should be fairly familiar with how to set this up. So we've got success, created the configuration for Combi 2, we'll hit finish and we will scroll all the way to the bottom. It says failed to set up and I've had this problem a couple of times and I don't know why. So I'm going to uh, reload the integration and see if it initializes this time. And it's reloaded and it's failed to set it up again. So what I'm going to do is go back to the decons add-on and I'm going to stop the decons container and turn off start on boot and see whether that solves my problem. Go back to settings, to devices and services and reload the Convi Zigbee Home Automation. It's reloaded and there we go. So you can either have decons running or you can have the Zigbee Home Automation running. You cannot have both at the same time, it would seem. So now that we've got Combi 2 Zigbee Home Automation, we've got one device here. And if I click on that, we've got some details about it. We've got the Zigbee info here as well. And there's no entities from the unit itself, but we can click on add devices via this device. And we're now searching for Zigbee devices. So I'm going to grab uh, this Akara Zigbee button and I'm going to press and hold the pairing button on top until we see the blue light flash and we're starting the interview. The device is ready to use. I'm going to change the name to Akara button one. Uh, and in the area, I'm going to add a new area and I'm going to call it Hobby Show. And I'll click Add. Uh, and then it says the device is ready for use. So we should just be able to go back to Settings and then Devices and Services and scroll to the bottom. We've got two devices and three entities. I'll click on two devices and we've got our Akara button one there. And if I drill in, uh, just to make sure that it works, I can press the button and we get an event show up in the logbook. And I can uh, do a long press. So we've got a long press was fired and short press event was fired. Uh, so we have that button paired to our home assistant using ZHA and this Combi Zigbee USB stick. So obviously we're not just limited to pairing buttons. We can pair Zigbee lights and other Zigbee accessories as well. As you saw with the decons interface, you could pair sensors and all sorts of things if you wanted to. If you want me to take a deep dive of the decons interface uh, in another video, let me know in the comments down below, uh, at least for the purposes of the train and hobby show, uh, this setup with ZHA is going to be perfectly adequate for me. So that is the Conby USB Zigbee stick. It is cheaper than the Nortec at $59, and that price does mean that it doesn't appear to have any Z-Wave connectivity. Now, according to the Foscon website, it does have an indoor range of up to 30 metres and up to 200 metres line of sight. 
and they claim that the power amp allows for the signal to pass through two to three rooms or floors depending on the construction. The website also boasts compatibility with Philips Hue, IKEA Trad Free, Xiaomi Akara and many more ecosystems and there's a full compatibility list on the website. Using a Zigbee USB stick like this one would allow you to bypass the need for any proprietary hubs like the IKEA Trad Free Hub, the Philips Hue Hub or the Xiaomi Hub and still allow you to connect your Zigbee devices directly to Home Assistant and control them all from there. That said, you may lose some functionality from those devices. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Any contributions you make through buy me a coffee get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.